Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to improve your retouching workflow, matching color tones in Photoshop. So let's get started. So the first thing is to understand why do we need to match color tones. Retouching is not about completely changing or creating a new image. Is about cleaning distractions so that the capture image stands out as it should. Those subtleties are per perceived by our brains as distraction. So look at me. I have uh, some under eye colors that differs from the rest of my face. You may, you may perceive that as me being tired or not getting enough sleep and that's not good when you're trying to sell a product. Let's go to our image. All right, guys, so we're here with our image and um, this is a great example. We have a beautiful picture of Courtney right here and Courtney is a regular person, so she's not a model. Uh, so that's very good because it's going to reflect what happens to all of us, basically, you know, who are not models because models tend to take uh, more not I wouldn't say more care, but they need to be aware more of how they look. So they do a lot of treatments and skincare and whatnot. It's not I'm not saying that we regular humans don't do, <laughs> but they have to to keep up, uh, you know, a certain levels so they can keep working. So anyway, I want to make it as real as possible. So Corny is just a regular human, but very, very beautiful. And what happens is it shows what happens to our skin just because of life. All right. So I was explaining how I'm going to have different uh, uh, skin tones depending on, on the areas on my, on my face or on my body and all that. So right out of the bat, we can see how her tones here in the forehead, you know, are going to be different from here on the cheekbones and uh, especially the neck, the chest and the shoulders. And that's just because, you know, we wear different kind of clothes and the way the sun hit at our skin, you know, we get sunburn, we get tan and that is going to create different shades. But when it comes to retouching and uh, especially for, for beauty clients and editorials and cosmetics and whatnot, that needs to be corrected. We need to see a very even skin tone. So here's a really cool trick, you know, that I'm going to show you. So I already retouched part of the image and uh, as the finishing touches, what I do is this skin match, uh, skin tone match. So I go here to my original image uh, to say it and we are going to sample uh, the tones from the shadows, from the mid tones and the highlights as well. Okay just so we have a general idea and I can go ahead and even out the rest of the skin. So what I do is uh, I'm going to sample, you know, I come here, I drop a tool and I'm going to sample uh, a tone from the shadows. Uh, the, the hair wouldn't be a good example because it, it is going to be too dark. We have different, you know, uh, tones in our hair. It, it's just not going to match our skin. We're trying to look the skin. So I think a good example right here from to pick from would be here. Okay. So you can see here that we have that sample and I come here to the swatches and I'm going to create a new swatch and I'm going to call it corny as corny as H for shadows. Great. Now we have the shadows. Let's move into the midtones and somewhere in here, would be a good example of the midtones of Corny's uh, skin, but mm, I don't know. You know, I was just explaining how the sun hit our hits our face and we get different tones. So a an even and perfect uh, balanced tone for the midtones will be around here. So again, the neck because we usually cover and protect the neck uh, and chest. So somewhere in here would be a good, good choice for our midtones. All right. So again, I'm going to rename it as Courtney Mid for midtones. Lastly, the best spot that I've found to get the highlights is in our forehead, because especially this area, we reflect the light that, that hits us. And um, 
we all have, you know, like that little spot that is very um, bright. So we got the highlights, and you guessed it right. I'm gonna put it corny. H I for highlights. So I have my samples. Now I need a way to apply that to my image. And what I've done from here, and I'm going to create an adjustment, um, a gradient mask, uh, adjustment layer, gradient mask. Ooh, it got so funky. <laughs> Don't panic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose this one that goes from black to white, and that is because we're going to from totally black uh, or deep into the shadows to totally white or deep into the highlights. All right, we got the gradient mask. We're going to apply our swatches. So we create, you know, like different stages in here throughout the gradient. Uh, and we go to swatches. First, I pick my shadows. Okay, oh, you see? Just applied already. Then I go into my midtones. Ah, now the image has some volume. Now it's three dimensional. And lastly, you know, I choose my highlights. Okay. <clears throat> so we have the image like that. Hmm, that's cool. All right. But I can modify this, you know, to have a richer contrast, you know, between the shadows and the highlights, especially like you're seeing here how I was losing information and I want that to look a little bit more three-dimensional, more real, but not too extreme. You don't need to get like too uh, detail-y here. Uh, we just need a, a really nice balance for the image, all right? And then, cool, you know, I, I have the tones applied. But this is a little bit too much, right? And I don't see the color of her eyes and the rest of the image. So here on the mask, I'm going to command I, you know, to invert it. Now check, we're still at 100% opacity, okay? Uh, I need to see what I'm doing. And I click B for the brush tool, okay? And I'm going to do it a little hard edged, uh, probably 90. 90 all right and I just dive into the image you know I start like coloring the areas that I want to to get so wait I go here to color okay and since the mask is black uh, whatever I paint with white it's going to be revealed in my image so I go with white right uh, a flow and everything to hundred percent and we're start oh there you go We'll start just getting into that image. Okay, maybe it's a little bit too hard on the edges. Let's go a little bit. Okay, and don't worry, you know, oh my God, it looks so wide, oh Lord, what's gonna happen? Don't worry about it that much. Uh, one of the things that I would try to avoid is just um, the eyes, the reason why. The makeup artist just uh, worked really hard on creating the, the colors for the eyes and all that. So, you know, we just try to help the makeup artist <laughs> and keep the work in, intact. Um, okay, so I go here. And I try to be not too strong in this area because of course, again, I just said we had a makeup artist um, working on those areas of the skin, you know, the rest of the skin, just go for it, you know. But uh, at least on those areas uh, that we call like the mask of the face, um, try to be very gentle. Um, of course, we're doing it really fast in here for the example. Uh, but for a final image, we would take a lot more time, a lot more care um, in the way we're painting. So this is just a quick, quick, quick example for you. I don't mind going this way because I'm also uh, painting the neck, you know, or filling the neck, uh, right? Maybe I just can go here and go, I don't know, 14, 15% and just fill it in there, you know, not too strong as I said. So I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen in the end. Okay, so we have that. Oh, let's not forget about the ears, okay? I say, oh my God, it looks so different. Yeah, I know. Just 
Give me a second. All right. So we keep going in here. Boom. I can just make it a little bit bigger. It's just like a coloring book. <laughs> okay, go smaller. I know I'm going super quick for you guys. Okay, I have to make it bigger. Chum, chum, chum. Nice. <coughs> And we have all our colors, okay? We're just missing this area, so we go here. Outline, and then I can make it bigger, and this one. So let's pretend I just did it, and then you're gonna be like, oh my God, Julian, what did you do? I even the tones. But remember, we have a lot of control because first we have a mask, and then we have the opacity, all right? So on the opacity, I like to go probably around 15 to 20%. Okay, let's go to with 20, 20%, all right? And I can tell, you know, how even those tones are already, all right? Let me just turn this on and off. We're going to off and on and off and on. And then you see, you know, how everything has changed and especially in, in this area right here you see the changes here everything but overall overall the image is going to have a very even skin tone so goal accomplished you know that's what we really wanted to do and this was a very quick example maybe in here i need to do a little bit more you know and really get into that transition um of course, as I told you, we have all the power in the world, you know, to to move it in here to make it stronger or not. Or I can go into the mask, you know, and uh, also refine the edges and refine all of that. So there you have it, guys. How to match the skin tones in Photoshop really, really quick, easy and apply to your images because it's going to change the game. It's going to change per perception. All right. Thank you so much for watching this. If you like this video, consider sharing with your friends. If there are some questions or maybe another method on how to do this, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.